in order to work with Illustrator objects, you have to select the Illustrator objects or the anchors or the paths or the pieces or the whatever, and then you can affect them. You can change the color, you can delete them, you can move them. So we're going to explore ways to select the different objects or elements in your Illustrator artwork. Here we go. Well, the most um, common way to select is using the selection tool. And with the selection tool, you can click on an object and that object is then selected. You can see the bounding box around it, the handles, and that selects the object. And you can also select paths. So this is a, an opened path and I can click on that and select it. Now if I were to um, use that same selection tool and I click and drag around, it's called making a marquee. I can make a marquee and then everything inside the path gets selected. Now notice when I make this marquee, I don't have to go all the way around the object. I can just touch it and that becomes selected. You can also use your shift key and that will add to items to your selection. The shift key also lets you click and deselect items from the selection. So using that shift key, you can add. You do have a select menu and that'll let you do things like select all, or select inverse, show you that's everything else but what was selected, or to even reselect to go back to what you had, or to deselect, which is just a really a fancy way of clicking somewhere outside of your objects, clicking somewhere else. That's just an easy way of deselecting the file. Now, another way to select is to use the layers panel. And this actually becomes a really handy way of selecting because sometimes you have all these bits and pieces that are right on top of each other. And so you click on the, the um, target icon over here, and when you, when you click on it, you'll notice that he has a double um, ring, and that double ring tells you that the item is targeted, or in other words, it's selected. And the single ring means it's not selected or it's not targeted. And affectionately, I call that the double donut or the single donut. There you go. And that's just another way of selecting, but as I'm selecting this marquee, you can see that these items are targeted, and so the layers panel is reflecting the fact that they're selected. Now, the direct selection tool is another way of selecting pieces of your document. And let's zero in on this path, because you can really see the difference. When I just select with the selection tool, I get the entire path. That lets me move the path or resize the path with these handles. But the direct selection tool is a little different. It lets me directly select elements of the path, for example, the anchor points. These are those, those white handles. And you may not see necessarily completely with the, blue con the pink contrast, but you can see there's some red directional corners. So it's letting me select the anchor points as well as these curve handles. You can see that's changing the point. And I can even use it to select segments to move a segment up and down from that path. So that's the idea here of the direct selection tool. Now, with the direct selection tool does have another tool with it. It's called the group selection tool, and that's handy when you're working with groups of element. Let me just scroll over here, and I'll show you what that is. This document is grouped. We can see here in the layers panel that it's a group. And if I were trying to select that with the direct selection tool, I could get anchor points but the group selection tool is designed to actually help you select items that are within a group so that you could easily recolor them or move them or whatever you want, but it still maintains the group. It's still locked as a group. Go back here to my direct selection tool, and that would let me get to an, an anchor point as opposed to the whole object. Go back to my selection tool here. Now, another important concept is the isolation mode. Right now, we here are working on the canvas, but when you have objects like this group here, and I were to double click on it, I'm now in an isolation mode. In fact, the layer panel tells me isolation mode. And I can see over here an isolation bar that tells me that I'm in the isolation mode, and I can go back one level and just keep going back until I'm reg in the regular artwork mode. But when you're in the isolation mode, it isolates an object or objects so that the other options cannot be selected and you're not able to affect them. They are um, locked, essentially. So I can either click on that back button or I'll just press escape and that gets me all the way out back into that normal preview mode. 
Now, in addition, we have a couple other tools for selecting with the lasso tool and the magic wand. And I really like the lasso tool, especially when I'm doing something like a, a magic, uh, a mesh gradient or some live paint, because it allows me to select around an area without actually moving anything. It's going to select these pixels. So it's in a way, it's like direct selection, but it doesn't actually move anything. It doesn't change anything. And sometimes with the direct selection tool, when you're trying to select stuff, it's easy to accidentally move a point, and you're like, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Good thing there is undo. But there we go with that selection. And then there's a magic wand. The magic wand selects based on color. So as colors change, the magic wand will update. And that can be handy when you're trying to select stuff with lots of different color shifts. There actually is a panel for the magic wand. Let's go here and turn that on. That gives you some settings for the color. And what exactly are you trying to select? Trying to select fill color, stroke color, weight, etc. And the tolerance just says how close does the color need to be. So you can see here when I clicked on blue, it actually is selecting items that have that same blue. And I suppose if I change my tolerance high enough, I could probably get some other blue options in there. Maybe that was so high, look, I got a little too much of stuff. But you get the idea is that um, you can have some items, and that would be handy if you had several sh shades of blue, and you might not have to go all the way to 32, which is the default, but you could um, set it back to maybe like 40-ish or something like that. And then that actually, we will go slip this back to selection, that actually comes up to some other options on the control panel, you have a button here, the very last tool, which allows you to select similar objects. So in many ways, it's like the magic wand, and you can select based on fill color or stroke color. So right now we have a blue fill color, and we have the, all these items have a black stroke color. And so I could set that up to select by fill color, or if we were to do fill and stroke, they'd have to have the same options, the same um, black and white. Stroke weight could be a little different. That has to do with the actual weight, one point, et cetera. And then you can even do some things based on opacity, appearance. Uh, that could even be some style effects. Now, this is all through the control panel. In the select menu, we have essentially the same tool with just a few variations. But when you choose select same, then you can choose how you want to select it. There's even a few other options in here to choose from. The select menu also, if you take a closer look, has some options for selecting types of objects. So objects that have different features. And I like this when I'm trying to clean something up. So I might have some different stray points. And let's go ahead and deselect everything, first of all. And if I choose object um, stray points, that's handy, because every once in a while, I have little extra um, points that were just random. And it's a way to, to clean things up. Or for example, I'm doing some work with the web-based graphics, and I want to find out anything that's not based on a pixel grid so that I can quickly align it for, for working with web. There is another option where you could do a save selection. And so if you're finding yourself always selecting, let's go and move this panel all the way, you find yourself always making a certain selection. For example, I'm always selecting these three stars, click, shift, click, always doing those three stars. And that could be an example where you might even want to save that selection. so that you could easily reselect it anytime you needed to if you're trying to do some certain effects with it. But ultimately, when these are selected, you can move the items, you can resize the items, you can color the items, you get the idea. If it, when it's selected, it's affected, and you have lots of ways of selecting objects and also selecting different anchor points. All right, well, now it's time for a pop quiz. What does the selection tool select? A, objects and paths. B, anchor points and directional handles. C, individual objects inside a group. D, colors and strokes. The answer is A. The, the selection tool allows you to select objects and paths, while the direct selection allows you to select anchor points and curves, and the group selection allows you to select grouped objects and paths. So those are some options you have.